And so it's about that time for another round of the dev servers, but this time it's for the Sky Guardians update. Now, I do want to knock this out at the very beginning. That is the disclaimers. That's right, a couple of them actually, all right? The first one being is that this is the dev server. You should always take this with a grain of salt. Never take it to face value until it actually drops in the main server. Everything is subject to change from flight models to gun sounds, vehicle sounds, um, how vehicles perform, etc. It might be OP as hell here in the main uh, dev server, but when it drops in the live, it might not be that anymore. Take a look at the R73s for the MiG-29s, uh, etc. They drop those pretty quick, unfortunately. They were nice when they were here, but they're gone. And I'm sorry to say they're not back here either, at least not for the time being. That is, of course, subject to change as we get our second dev server and then the live update. And the second part of that disclaimer is that this is going to be an overview of all these vehicles. I'm going to take them out just for a little bit to kind of showcase some new changes and feature changes that I really like and don't like. Uh, but for the most part, I'm going to be sitting here in the hangar just talking the entire time. So if you want to use this as like a little podcast type deal, you're more than welcome to do so. But don't expect any sort of just raw gameplay showcasing the vehicle. I will have... Uh, each vehicle outlined in its own video uh, a little bit later, either today or uh, this weekend, of course. So keep an eye out for that in the notification tab, which if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel to get those updates. Cool. Awesome. Anyways, with that being said, let's start off with the very first nation here, which is the Americans. I wanted to do that jump cut just so that we can, you know, transition and it's easier for me to organize things. So sorry for the random little transition <laughs> but the first thing we have here is the ah6m in truth it's not that fascinating it, it really isn't it doesn't really fly that well at least not right now uh, the flight model is kind of weird even without ordinance it doesn't fly that very well right but we do have 12.7s which they sound very 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 nice uh, i'll show that clip right here kind of floating right in front of you right there uh it sounds really good and i absolutely love it just listen to that oh yeah <laughs> that's pretty nice isn't it <laughs> but uh, of course you get the uh the laser guided uh the apkws whatever the rockets that are laser guided cool you get it right and 762s you can't really make a versatile loadout unfortunately with guns and all this because of weight issues and everything but you do get hellfires they are the k models uh which uh, i mean it's not that great 10.0 really cool and it sits in its own little lineup which is really interesting check this out yeah its own little thing that's interesting we might get a better version who knows oh and next up is the uh LVAD. this one is uh <laughs> it's not new but listen to this that sounds so good doesn't it it really does <laughs> okay so there's that and then we have the des moines it's a premium that's it. That's all you have to know. It's it's a premium heavy cruiser boat. Yes, or, or not a boat specific channel. I'm sorry, guys. USS Nevada, really chunky, big guns, not a boat channel. So if you want more details about this, I'll leave you over to individuals such as Napalm Rat. He does a lot more naval stuff than I do. So check him out for sure. And then we also have the US T1E1, which is just cool. I, I don't really know what the difference is i'm sure there's some differences i didn't look into it to be honest but it's it looks gross i'll tell you that just i don't know it looks very kind of like rounded almost yeah dev server stuff right and then also you get the f4s phantom 2 a premium phantom with aim 9h's and of course the aim 7f's uh which versions uh the regular sparrows so cool premium it does get a gun pod that's kind of a yikes in my opinion this also gets the new ejection seats check this out That's so cool, isn't it? <laughs> I just, I love it personally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, does he have grandpa ordinance? Let me, let me see. Uh, no, just bombs and rockets and stuff. So no uh, guided ordinance, no TV guided stuff. Okay, so that's really it for the Americans. There are some changes uh, in features, etc. I, I did not like them because I, I couldn't find them personally. But if you see them, put them down in the comment section. 
cool. Now, up next to the Germans, they get something nice. So I'm going to start off with the KPZ-70. Now, it's not a new vehicle, right? It's been around for a very long time, but there was a significant change to this vehicle. I think it has something to do with some sort of algorithm for penetration values, etc. It doesn't really apply to the entire game, I think, but it does apply to mostly the British, which we will get to in just a quick second. But this vehicle got a nerf. Look at this. This dart also applies to the American versions of the XM803 and the MBT70. I think the 803 as well, but I know for a fact the MBT70 is, I did see it too. But this is kind of a big nerf in my opinion. 285 at zero, 165 at 60. I get it, it's still good, don't get me wrong. But at battle rating 9.3, it's kind of in a tough spot. Sure, six second reload, I understand that. I don't really agree with this. However, I'll leave it kind of the way it is, which is a shame too. This is a brilliant vehicle, even in today's standards. However, when it comes to the battle rating 1.7 environment, we do have the new, I'm not gonna pronounce it. Don't try to get me to say it, please. This thing. Yes, cool. Auto cannon. it gets Panzer Grenade 40, 40 millimeter pen at 1.7, it's not bad. Wheelie boy, very fast. What's not to love, right? <laughs> okay, 80 horsepower. Oof, my Honda has more than that. No, probably not, I, I don't know. I'm not a car guy, okay? And then we have the T72 M1. Finally, the Germans get the T72, but it gets three-tone cork, which means that if you're playing this thing in sim and you see this camo pattern and you still shoot them, you're doing it on purpose, all right? It just If you can't identify this, Clear your thermals, look at it. It's a friendly. Cool, right? No identifying marks, camo is definitely it. But yeah, it looks gross, doesn't it? Now, it's the same as you'd find for any other P72 M1 for the Swedish and for the Russians. It has the upper front plate, I think, stock as well, which is good against uh, M735, et cetera. But I mean, it's, it's nothing special. It's the same thing as we have right now, but the Germans finally get it. Man, it's been a long time. But here's another star of the show, the MiG-29 A model. That's right, I, I think this is the A model. Um, it's just MiG-29, right? I don't know much about it, to be honest. I'm not gonna go into detail about everything. I will say this, it does get the ER-1 missiles, which I believe are exports. Uh, it gets the R-1s, the T-1s, and then the R-60 MKs, and then R-60s and some bombs, etc. The only thing I know about this is, at least from what I've been told, it doesn't have ECM, which I don't think, matters in War Thunder right now anyways, and it has a little bit less fuel. That is really it. It's the same as you would find uh, with the existing MiG-29 uh, in the game for the Russians. I can't say that with absolute certainty. So, or certainty, I can't English today. I just got done with the stream. I'm sorry, guys. You know what I mean, okay? So, comment section down below. Is there any difference to this? Let me know. The Germans finally get something very nice. And of course, when it comes to boats, boats. 40 millimeter bofers, torpedoes, cool. To my 30 players playing naval, enjoy. And speaking of which, um, let's go to the Russians. And for when it comes to the Russians, they have quite a few good things too. Now I do have the 2S38 here. Um, I was gonna talk to you guys about how this thing's auto loading mechanism, it did change up a little bit, meaning that uh, I think it's been standardized across all auto loading mechanisms where you now have a five second uh, ammunition replenishment, which is a nerf to some vehicles and a buff to others, such as the automatic, um, such as the type 10, etc. It is, it's nice now that you're able to fire more efficiently and be able to not worry about the replenishment too much. But when it comes to vehicles like the 2S38, the CV90, uh, 40C, etc., those kind of got a nerf in that area, which means that you're gonna have to be very careful about how you use your uh, your munition now, which again is, is nice. I, I agree with it entirely, but off to, of course, the boats. Cool. It's, yeah, wh whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't do naval stuff. If you want more naval, you know who to talk to. Napalm Rat's a very good one again. So check them out. But taking a look at the aircraft, though, this is an interesting one. The Yak-141, a VTOL aircraft that can go supersonic. It afterburns. It's really, really cool, right? You also get with it R60 MKs or M's, excuse me. You get the R27Ts, the R's, and the ER missiles, as well as some ground pounding loadout. In truth, I wouldn't carry ground pounding with this thing. Um, it's up to you guys. I would carry it as an air-to-air -air loadout fight. You know what I mean by that, but 
yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm excited for this. It's definitely gonna be something that's gonna be in my hangar. And then of course we have a lower tier M5359. This thing is basically the milk truck, but better, a lot better, right? 30 millimeter gun, check this out. 91 millimeters of penetration. You could spank Tiger 1s, Panthers, I think even Tiger 2s to some extent. I don't quote me on that one right there, but this thing, <laughs> oh man. It's not fast, unfortunately, but oof, it's nice. And then, of course, we have what I like to consider to be the star of the entire show, the Pantsir S1. This thing doesn't really need an introduction, right? It's basically the uh, the Radcalf wagon, or not the Rad, I'm sorry, um, the Four Rack Rad, excuse me. Sorry, weird German names, right? It doesn't move that well. You can fire on the move, but you get 12 of these 95 YA6 missiles, which can engage up to 18 kilometers 18 that is absolutely insane 1300 meters a second this is unbelievably stupidly good i'll tell you what though this thing is gonna spank f-16s because you know they can ground pound with gbs and stuff this thing is gonna spank the hell out of them right great optics too 5.8 to 28 times with i think a gen 2 or gen 3 thermal sight you do get infrared search and track locking which is very nice and you also get up to 38 kilometers extended range, which is pretty nuts. Oh, and you also get a 30 millimeter gun. It's the same found on the uh, the 2S6, so nothing special about it. So that means this thing ugh, is going to be OP, just saying. But you know what's funny? This is not the best thing the Russians may be getting. I'll just say that. <laughs> and of course, we have battle rating 1.0 prop. It's got bombs. It's got rockets. It's not too fancy. 1.0 cool now off to the british and they get something very nice now i'm going to start off with the conqueror because this thing got a significant buff so much so that it's going to get its own video when it comes out in the next major update nothing else really changed here right optical rangefinder additional armor it's not that fast right but it does get this Look at that, at battle rating 7.7, 487 millimeters flat pen. I said that word, excuse me here, right? Just got done with the stream. 393 at 30, but 136 at 60. This thing, there's a lot of flat things to shoot at around this BR, and this shell type is absolutely no joke. Um, the, not the Vickers, yeah, the Vickers, as well as the uh, Centurion Mark 10, also got a buff to their APDS. I think APDS in general, just in War Thunder, more or less got a new uh, algorithm or formula change up or uh, update or something. And now they're really damn good. Is it going to stick? I'm pretty sure it is, but we'll see more about that as the live ser uh, server drops. And also we have a boat, Terra Nova. Cool. Another boat. Actually, I like how round it is to me. It's really interesting, right? And then, uh, wait, what does it get? I'm curious now. Um... Oh, it gets mortars. That's right. It gets these. Those are really cool looking, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> and then we, of course, we get the Whitby uh, with more mortars, of course. Nothing anything special, to be honest. And then we get the Churchill NA-75. The joke of this is the face kind of looks like Madonna almost, but I, I don't know. It's got Sherman's gun. It's got AB, uh, uh, AP CBC, which is very nice. I, I don't know what to think about this just saying right <laughs> God, if i use her face you know what i'm not gonna use her face on the video because i feel like i might get a copyright strike or something so but don if you're watching this i don't know why you'd be watching this i meant what i said <laughs> so off to the next one the chally 2e which creatively enough this thing is above the black knights yeah right it doesn't make any sense but take everything you love and hate about the challengers and give it a better engine 1500 horsepower engine this thing is very nimble now it it moves fast right you take a look at uh what's the speed of the black knight right 59 actually is it 59 I'm, I'm sorry double check that i ran through it right yeah 59 kilometers an hour 72 it, you trust me when i say you will notice the increase in mobility which makes this a way better vehicle in my opinion and then next up, we have the Tornado F3. This is basically a dogfighting tornado with four 9Ls, internally integrated, uh, or yeah, uh, flares, and Skyflash super temps. You have four of them. 
So I, I personally don't like dog fighting with this thing. I'd rather use it for ground pounding, but to my good pilots out there, there you go. You get a dog fighting tornado. Cool. And also the Lancaster, it's not a new aircraft, but it did get the 12,000 pounder. I think this is the tall boy. Ooh, it's big. Yeah, PE-8, you just got dethroned by the British. Oh, yes, I'm looking forward to seeing all the team killers in this game for this thing. Just saying, okay? They're going to see, like, a mass of players and enemy. They're going to be like, you know what? I can justify it. And boom. <laughs> so we'll see more about that as the server drops. So off to the Japanese. Now, the Japanese aren't getting too many things, right? I have the Type 16 prototype as well as the Type 16 here to kind of compare some things. This is a premium Type 16. It's everything you would find with the regular one, except for the camo pattern and the chain. And you only get M735 as your top APFSDS. You get everything else. Laser warning system, laser range finder combined, Gen 3 thermal sights, the Type 10's optics, uh, commander sight, etc. Also, if you didn't see the um, color changes right here, these are really nice, to be honest. Hell yeah. <laughs> but this is basically a sort of dumbed down by firepower Type 16. I'm going to say this right now. I think this is a worthwhile purchase because 8.7, 9.0 for the Japanese is really good. Look at this, right? You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine potential vehicles to play with at 9.0 and a little bit less at 8.7. So it gets my recommendation. I'll have its own video out uh, at a later date later after the update drops. And of course, we also have the F-16 AJ. If I slip up a little bit, guys, I'm sorry. I'm dehydrated like hell and i just got done with the stream so i'll change that up shortly now this isn't anything special in truth right it's basically what you would find with i would say the taiwanese that has both the uh aim 9l ability as well as the aim 7 f's and the adf uh and the agm 65 b's which mavericks aren't really that good anyways but i'll take it because right now the japanese or at least in the main game do not have any ground pounders this is it okay sure dumb bombs right but no guided munitions this thing finally gives it that ability and brings it up to the high tier meta environment that is ground pounding. And that's really it. Type 10 was just for the whole reload stuff. It, you know, five second replenishment. It's really nice. Let's go over to uh, the Chinese. Now, at least for the time being, the Chinese only get two new things. I have the Type 69 right here to kind of showcase something uh, to compare this with, right? This is the new ZTS-63. It is a more modernized PT-76, or at least the one that they have uh, in the game currently. This gets two really good things, right? You get a laser range finder at 7.3, and you get this dart, the DJW85, which is better than that of the Type 69. Take a look at those values, right? 191, 125 at 30 and 60. Yeah, 260. Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, 191, 131 at 30 and 60. So you can kind of see the difference right there, right? It is actually pretty freaking nuts that this thing gets a slightly better pen value of uh, darts at the relatively lower BR of 7.3. You do get also APCBC, which is found, this is regular for the uh, 85 millimeter. I think this is the same one found on the T44. I could be entirely wrong here. And you get stock heat at best. Now, of course, you don't get a uh, stabilizer. So this thing is really bouncy. Interesting when I say it bounces a lot and you have no armor. So I guess that's kind of the balancing feature to this, but this is more of those uh, of that type of vehicle where if you see it, you might want to kill it really quickly because it's probably going to kick your butt. And then we also have a uh, Taiwanese version of this. Cool. I mean, nothing really special. And that's really it, to be honest. I may be missing something, but that's that's it for the Chinese. Now off to a very interesting one, the Italians. Now the Italians are getting some love. This is something they've been needing for a very long time. We have a new vehicle here. It's the Ariete AMV, right? 1500 horsepower engine versus the 1300 found on these ones right it's still the same speed but trust me when i say this thing is torquey you will feel the speed on it the power you don't get any significant change to the performance of the vehicle when it comes to protection right it's the same armor if anything shoots you you're probably going to die very very quickly but that's if the enemy doesn't see that you have this you get DM-53. CL-3143 was replaced for free by the DM-53 L-44 variant, not the L-55. You know, higher muzzle velocity, higher penetration, so on and so forth, right? But this is very nice. The Ariete 
and the PSO also get it as well. So the entire top tier lineup, except for one vehicle, gets a huge buff to firepower, which basically means that the Italians are now coming into the higher tier meta of being at least powerful in one area as opposed to the other. Or the, as the AUV now has good mobility and firepower, but no protection. Now, I did bring up the Centaur 120 because it does not get it. It still gets a 3143, which is fine. I accept it. I understand it. I don't mind it. But yikes, Gaijin. Oh, and the automatic also got a buff to the reload speed as well. You know, the whole standardized uh, replenishment. So this thing now, you're not going to be sitting there for, what, 20 seconds replacing each round. It's not going to be five seconds, which is really, really nice. Gaijin, I like this buff. Well done. Now off to the Lonely French. And of course, the French Navy is coming to War Thunder, but just in one boat. Just for the time being. Now, before you start getting upset, Gaijin has done this for every single new nation where they always bring in a new vehicle first, premium for one update, let people get kind of get used to it for a little bit, and then they start bringing in the whole tech tree lineup as part of the uh, closed beta access, unless you bought this, and then the very next update after that, they're fully released. Um, so kind of treat this, you know, as you would any other nation for new stuff. Naval's not going to get a lot of traction right now with this thing, by, at least from what I can see, but that's really it. And then, of course, we also have the 2C instead of the, uh, well, what's it called, right? Um, the 2C BIS, we have the regular 2C without the really big cannon. Still has, you know, the, the party bus status to it. It also gets a 75 millimeter as opposed to, I think it's a 155 or 183 on the other one. I, dude, I haven't played it. Give me a second here. What is it? Yeah, it's the 155, right? Instead, you get a 75, which is cool. I mean, it's, it's not the best. It is battle rating 2.7, so take that as you absolutely will. So uh, let's jump over to the Swedish. And to my Swedish mains out there, you do get a Finnish marksman, more or less. Instead of it being the Chieftain, you get a Leopard 2 chassis. I think it's the 2A4 chassis, but trust me when I say this thing, it moves. It moves really well. And that's interesting, right? 8.3, but a Leopard 2 chassis. That's awesome, isn't it? It is a Finnish version of this vehicle, of course. So it's part of the Finnish uh, sub tech tree. And you don't really, you know, it's it's not that great. It's not that bad. You get DM23, uh, which is, you know, brilliant for the most part. Great speed. I don't see this being any crazy, awesome fun, but it's fast. And I take that as you absolutely will. And that's really it. I do have the 9040C, five second per round. Ugh. I don't agree with it. This is where I was talking about the whole like buff and nerf stuff. This, this was a nerf, but you know what? It's fine. It is what it is. Now off to the final Israel. They only get one thing and that is the Merkava Mark IV LIC. In truth, I don't know what the difference is between the 4B and the 4M. Well, except for the APS, of course, but I, I don't know. The armor is the same. The firepower is the same. Optics are the same. Thermal sights, all the same. If there's any difference to this and the 4B besides some aesthetic appeals to it, let me know down in the comment section. I would love to know, is, is there any significant change to this vehicle outside of the already existing ones? And in truth, that's it. Yeah, that's that's all they're getting. Cool, let's uh, jump over to the final bit. So when it comes to my final thoughts of this video, of this update coming up, at least for the first step server, I don't really agree with the Pantsir S1. The 2S6 was more than capable uh, of dealing with pretty much everything. There were some changes to radar as a whole. And seeing that we have the new leading targeting system found on the tour here as well, I can understand the reasoning as to why guys you want, might want to bring this. In truth, I don't think it's really necessary because 18 kilometer engagement range, I'm very certain other platforms may get theirs. And Russia has been known realistically to have some pretty overbearing uh, anti-air systems as that's kind of their doctrine against us, right? USA is more aviation. The Russia is more uh, anti-air defense system, which is why they have, at least to my knowledge, some of the best anti-air systems in the world. This is going to be reflected just a little bit in this game with the Pantsir S1. Although I do hope the tires break on occasion because I'll leave it to that. <laughs> okay, if you know, you know, right? The 141 is going to be fun. I can't wait for this. But when it comes to other features that I know I missed, such as, you know, changes to sounds, changes to vehicles performances, um, there was uh, new bombs being added for some prop aircraft. There's a lot of changes I did miss 
in truth it's way too much to get into for the most part i will have a link down to the dev blog talking about all the changes in the dev server if you guys are very curious about it today we only took a look at most if not all of the new vehicles coming up in the next major update but i think uh war thunder is getting something a little bit more interesting in the next dev server or during its initial launch as gaijin likes to throw some last minute vehicles a day before the update drops and trust me when i say there is something very interesting coming that i can't tell you about at least not yet so that's it for when it comes to this video i hope you guys did enjoy this bit of a talking ahead my voice is completely shot now and uh, if you want to see all this gameplay or at least the gameplay of war thunder top tier live you know exactly where to find me over on twitch link is down in the description below and also don't forget to use my three percent discount if you buy any golden eagles if you buy any vehicle packs that are coming up right now use that three percent it does benefit me it helps me out a ton and seeing that i just got my dog uh settled with his you know his new vet bill he had some stomach problems and you know there was blood involved in it etc yeah, let's just say it kind of threw me in the hole so thank you so much for supporting me as a creator and you guys are brilliant and i can't thank you enough for that and neither can mickey okay so with all that being said again i hope you guys enjoyed everything thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this and i will see you not only in the next video or even the streams but also in war thunder itself so as always happy grinding and good luck